Euro Truck Simulator 2 is without a doubt one of the most successful driving games there is out there. It was released actually 10 years ago already and is still going strong. New DLCs are being added quite regularly. It is being updated graphically. It looks even better now than it did at release. And there are not a lot of alternatives. For example, well, the problem with your truck simulator is that well, if you don't like to, to drive trucks like myself, then uh, sure you can have some uh, downloadable cars. There are mods, but you know it's a little bit boring. There's nothing to do if you don't like trucks. So that's why I'm lo always looking for alternatives, similar games, but with other types of vehicles. And I came up with Trucks and Logistics Simulator. And so I'm going to review this game for you and see if it is a viable alternative to Euro Truck Simulator 2. So first I'm going to talk about the positives of Truck and Logistics Simulator. And I think that one of the biggest pluses in this game is that it features a large array of vehicles. We're having minivans and this vehicle that looks like, for example, a Fiat Fiorino or a Citroën Berlingo Peugeot. Peugeot TP? Yeah, not the part of the TP. They have vans and pickup trucks, even cars for some reason, even though you can't put anything inside. These are just going to be used for towing. Uh, small trucks, large trucks. They even have some licensed vehicles as well. For example, you have brands like MAN or Scania and other vehicles that are easily recognizable but not licensed. You could recognize some Fords or some Fiat, for example. And I really like having different types of vehicle to drive. As I said before, I don't really like driving sluggish trucks. And that's why I would love to have your truck simulator 2 to feature some of the smaller vehicles like truck and logistics simulator does. It's a huge, it's a huge plus that uh, this game has, in my opinion. Now, I would also say that I think that the map is decently sized as well. Uh, for example, some of the longer missions that ask you to do some deliveries uh, seven kilometers across the map. And in this game, seven kilometers is seven kilometers. It's not like in Euro Truck Simulator 2, where you can cross the, entri the entire, uh, entire country in seven minutes. In this game, it is what it is, and I really appreciate this sense of real scale. You also have a lot of various landscapes in your in uh, I was going to say your truck in uh, truck and logistics simulators. You have farmlands, coastal lands, industrial lands, business districts, and various locations around the map really don't look the same. And I really appreciate this kind of diversity. There's another point that I really like in this game is that you can choose your real time. For example, uh, let's say it's five o'clock. 5 p.m. Uh, wherever you are well if you choose this option here it's going to look like it's 5 p.m. in the game as well and let's say you play two hours you start at 5 and you finish at 7 o'clock and let's say at 5 o'clock it's daytime and at 7 o'clock it's nighttime then you're going to be seeing uh, the, the the time of the day change as well and you will go from daylight to twilight all the way until nighttime it's very nice I really appreciate that or you can also uh, if you let's say for example it's in the middle of the night you can only play at night and you want to play during the day you can also choose the option to have some simulated time and uh, yeah it's, it's 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 a very nice touch that I wish other games would have as well you can also uh, play with no UI I've, I haven't noticed any UI in this game which I'm not sure it's a plus or a minus but for me it's a plus because I always find that UI is quite distracting in driving games I like to rely on the instrumentals of the cars themselves, looking at the speedometer and the tachometer and all of the other uh, instruments that tell me if I have enough fuel or not and what's my gear. That these these are you know the visual cues that that you would rely on in a real car, and that's what the game forces you to do. Maybe because the devs did not put in the UI, uh, it was too uh, time uh, time consuming to do. I don't know, but nevertheless, I think it's better than having UI. But that's my opinion, of course. Probably some of you guys will disagree. I also really like that you get to load your own crates in the game, but you can also choose not to, and that's wonderful because, well, it can become a chore if you have several uh, boxes to put in your in, in your vehicle, or if you have some rocks in the in in, in, the, in the bed of the back of the of your tr of the pickup truck, for example. It can be a little bit annoying, but at the same time, when you can successfully do that, when you can successfully load your vehicle, you kind of feel a sense of proud and accomplishment that, that really just feels good once you're done with that task and you get back in your vehicle, you know, the feeling of, ah, you know, that that's, that's that kind of feeling that you get, and uh, that was quite nice. And 
but again at the same time as I said it can get quite repetitive and boring and you just want to drive your vehicle you can also do that and that's a very nice touch now there are unfortunately some negatives as well and uh, yeah I was focusing on the on the positives first, and the game does have some some good positives. Uh, don't get me wrong, but it also has some pretty bad ones. Uh, so the first one, driving is horrible with a steering wheel. I'm sorry. I have a Logitech 923. I can't feel any force feedback. Sometimes there is, uh, but it's very 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 minor. And uh, the, the the worst part, I think, driving with the wheel is that I have to really make a big angle for the game to recognize that I'm trying to turn. It has uh, my wheel has a 900 degrees angle, and I really have to turn the wheel very very strongly so that I can see the wheel slightly turn on the screen. There's uh, a little bit of a desync here between your actual movements on the wheel and how it transcribes into the game, and the devs absolutely need to fix that. The damage system is also quite weird. Uh, the game does have some damage system, but uh, it doesn't really seem to be affecting realistically uh, how vehicles are handling, so that's something I that would also uh, fix. The sounds. Some of the sounds are great, you know, blinkers, wipers, rain, that's awesome, but uh, the braking sound is the same. Uh, every single time you are braking, yeah. something like that. And the worst part is when you have an accident, it's the same sound that you hear in 1997's Need for Speed 2. Yeah, um, quite frankly, uh, if you've been a long time gamer like myself for a long time and you hear this sound again and again and again and again for, well, for almost three decades now, uh, that's not that's not fantastic. That's not wonderful. So they need to. And I know that it's a, a small studio that they have a very small team, maybe a small budget. But come on, guys, uh, it's the same sound as Need for Speed 2 from 1997. You gotta be uh, better than that. The AI is also terrible. I'm sorry. Uh, I have been rammed by AI cars for no reason or no valid reason plenty of times and it's just frustrating you know you're crossing at the green light and boom car just uh, crosses just just bangs into you you are on a highway you know you have the priority and one of the cars uh, enters the highway and it doesn't slow down because you're coming yeah that's also um, that's also very frustrating as well so sorry the AI needs to be worked on as well uh, the AI also sometimes uh, slows down uh, quite dramatically before leaving a highway and uh, it's just it, it shouldn't be doing that but I think the reason is because uh, there is no transition between types of roads which is a big no-no for me uh, whether you're transitioning from uh, let's say uh, a highway to a normal uh, two-side road or let's say you're on your highway and there's an interchange there is no for example uh, there's no special lane that's going to make you slow down and leave you know, the, there's no access ramp for example the highways have no ramp and that's also uh, one of the problems I think uh, it's making the AI quite confused they need to make uh, roads better when it comes to transitions when you're switching for example from two lane roads to four lane roads it's just boom instant <laughs> no transition at all uh, it also looks very weird they need to be fixing that uh, right now there uh, I think that one of the biggest problems is their roads and another problem with roads is that I think the fast roads are way too narrow it's okay to have narrow streets narrow city roads but when it comes to fast roads uh, high, well, just you know highways or countryside roads they need to be a little bit broader because uh, when you're driving and when uh, Every, every time I'm driving faster than 60 kilometers per hour, including on some of the highways, which, by the way, the speed limit says 130 kilometers per hour. There's no way you would drive at that speed on those uh, on those highways because it just feels way too dangerous. Plus, if you consider how junky uh, the how janky the driving is with the steering wheel, it's extremely extremely hazardous. They need to widen those roads and. The last thing that I would say is that it's still early access and there hasn't been any major update for a year, although the devs are saying that they are working on one. So yeah, that's not great. And that's why I don't see myself playing this game 
Again, it is promising. It has some great ideas. Again, as I said, I love driving those smaller vehicles, minivans, which feels more like driving a car than driving a truck. I don't like driving trucks. So these are great ideas. Uh, I like the fact that there is a, a car that resembles an OD, but there is some gameplay for it. I, I wish that, for example, they've, they've put some passenger transport, uh, like, you know, VIP transport with that car. You go from one house to a shop, or if there's an airport or some factory, you know, you take them wherever they need to go. I think that this would have been great, but they did not do that and that's a missed opportunity here so that's why again as i said i don't think i'm gonna see myself playing this game again i have played 113 minutes that means i was seven minutes away from not being eligible to a refund on steam and unfortunately i will be asking for a refund but again that's just my personal opinion maybe you guys will like it and you're playing a bit longer and you will enjoy it let me know in the comment section down below that's all for this video guys um well that's my opinion of uh, truck and logistics simulator thank you so much for watching thank you so much to my special patreons the dj don eric on and dr forbin this is the eradicator i'll see you guys later A huge shout out to everyone who's been helping me out on Patreon and via the YouTube Joint Membership Program. Creating content on YouTube involves continuous circles of ups and downs and it is when we are the lower parts of the curve that your help really motivates me to keep on going. Your contribution really does make a difference which is why in return I try to give back by offering backers access to my private Discord channel, automatic access to exclusive giveaways or answering your questions during the show. You can help me out with as little as a dollar a month and any help is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching again. This is the Eradicator. I'll see you guys later.